So let's dig in and actually write some code now. So in my chapter 9 folder, I would like you to open writinghtml.html and writinghtml end. So in the end, if I take a look at my design, what I have here is I have a header, a subhead, a subhead 3, subhead 4, paragraph, some list items, bold and italic list items, a link, and a footer for what we're going to do with this file next. So if I go over to my writing HTML, then I see where all of those things are, but nothing's been done with them. And if I look at these in my design view, whoa, wait a minute, that doesn't look anything like you'd actually like it, right? So we go back over to our code view, and let's go ahead and write some of that code. So if I have a header here, I can really let Dreamweaver help me out by using my code hints. So if I start typing an H then, now I see that I have this pop up as an H1. So I hit my return key and now I need to finish the end of that open tag. I go to the close of it and because of how I have my preferences, if I start to end that and do a forward slash, then it's going to go ahead and end that for me. And again, that was in my preferences and let me bring that up for you. So I'm in my code hints and this is how I close my tags. So after I type the forward slash, it's going to go ahead and change it for me. Or after I type the end of the opening tag, it could just go ahead and put that closing tag in for me. Or I would want to do it myself. And if Dreamweaver is going to do it for me, why in the world would I want to do it myself? So my subhead 2 if I at least get exactly where I think that I'm in, the same grouping, then I can just use my down arrow to go to that particular one. And I can close that off. And I'll let you guys go ahead and do the other two. My paragraph is just a P. And I can close that off as well. Now, I've got a several list items here, and I'd like to make two separate lists, so I'm going to make myself a little bit of room above and below each of my items here. So on this one, I'd like this to be a bulleted list. This is an unordered list, so it doesn't have an order to it. It doesn't have a one, two, three to it. So it's going to be, if I start typing UL, and then I immediately want to close that so I don't forget it. Now I've got these list items. Now a list item is just that, an LI. And I can type that in there. And close that off. So I'll do these. And have that be closed. Oh. I didn't add my close, so it didn't understand what I'm looking for it to do. Great example of why we want to make sure and let the code hint help us out. And then I know that I've got the right thing. So if I take a look at that portion now, and while I'm waiting for you to do the other two, let me just fix this so I don't see that in my code. So H3, and then I'll do an H4, just so I don't have a problem there. Okay, so if I take a look now, I see that I've got all of my headers, I have my paragraph, and I have my bulleted list. Now all the rest of it still looks kind of messy, but we'll fix that in just a minute. Now let's say that I would like this top item to be bold and this next item to be italic. So I'm going to go back to my code. So I'm going to start typing strong. We don't use really B anymore at all to specify bold. And I will close that out. Don't need that extra space in there. So whenever I add items like this, I need to make sure that my structure is correct. So for instance, you know, my list item really comes first. So I need to kind of open and close that particular item first. 
And then my strong is on the inside of that. I wouldn't want my closed strong tag to be on the other side of my LI. I want to keep it on the inside. So if I do this one, and then we'll take a look at both, and this is just going to be an EM, and because we're writing it in the HTML, it means something totally different. We've been talking about M's, M's this, M measurement for that, but and it's mostly for fonts, so don't get that confused. This is an M, meaning that it's going to be italic. So when I'm writing it in the HTML, that means something totally different than what I'm writing it inside of my CSS. And I'll close that off and take a look at my design view. And now I've got a bold item and an italic item. And now let's write an ordered list. So my ordered list is just that. So it's OL. and it has the same list items. So for time's sake I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste those same list items in but I need to remember to finish off that particular portion of my tag. Now if I go to my design view I see that I now have that list item. Now remember before when I clicked on either the beginning part or the end part of that tag then I'm also able to change that list item. So if I click on that button inside of my property inspector and I see that I have a numbered list and I have a style. So do I want that to be an alphabet or a Roman numeral or a number and do I want it to start on maybe a different number? And if I click OK, then I see that it now starts at 4 instead of 1. So now we have a link. So now I'm going to go back over here to my code. So for my link, let's say that we're going to link this to another page in our site. So I need to put my very first tag in here. And what tag specifies a link is my A tag. So I also now need a space because just the tag itself isn't going to really do me much any good. I need to say where that's going to be. I need to give an href. And now I can browse for that particular link. So if I browse, then maybe I will just go to my index page. So again, it just leaves that open. And now I need to close that and I close that with a forward slash in front of it. So to keep my footer looking a little bit better, we'll just make that into a paragraph. And now we have a nice structured page.